Okay, Katie, how you doing? All right, so I will address all of this and then some. I've got your poster, the back of your poster up here. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Let's look at your writing first because I really got came out the fire with your writing. A couple of things I took from the kids' class feedback for this. I didn't mix a lot of my command color palette. I felt a little bit gradient. Okay, I'm not sure of the overall shape, but the bio is working. Okay, it is looking a little square, but that's it's a byproduct of, of that justified type. So um not sure of the overall shape of the bio because that's a hard part for me to answer it. Okay, I thought about a creating shape vertically and placing it to the left for the balance Malaz photo, but this looked kind of weird. I agree. I think that yeah, we'll we'll talk about all this. Okay, I had a larger eye. That's called a drop cap, by the way. Um, I, I want to talk about that as well. Uh, Ready, Malala's full is too harsh. I think it might be. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm, boy, I'm not sure about that. That uh, the gradient of that image. <clears throat> I don't think it's working, and I'm I'm gonna give you a couple of alternatives here, but I just don't. I just don't. I mean, it's not bad. It's following along really nicely with the concept of that gradation from, from you know, when she was born and really had no voice to, you know, today where she's got a very powerful voice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging that. But let's let, maybe it's the way that the gradient starts. We'll talk about that in a second. I just want to make sure I'm touching on everything. Is some of the timeline text probably too close together? Yes, indeed. I agree. I know some, some, some readability issues with the last bit. Uh, boxes around it. Never, never, never put boxes around things because they're not readable. It's a, it's a, it's a phenomenon. I think a lot of students want to do, and basically professional designers try to stay away from kind of compartmentalizing their their composition. So putting a box behind text to make it more readable actually works against you. Um, in some images you just can't use type over. I think there's other ways, alternatives. Um, to compensate therein, other than than placing boxes behind um, type, something that that most professional di designers dogmatically stay away from, including myself. I think it really, really does a. Uh, uh, it, it just it fragments the page too much. It, it brings things uh, away from each other instead of allowing things to work in a reciprocal fashion. All right. So enough of me talking. Let's jump over to the composition. All right. Um, I think that this is, okay, this is a poster, right? So this is a pretty large piece, which means that this type is going to be, it's going to be pretty large, I think. Um, the character count here is just too much. I mean, I'll bet your character count here is over 100. Character count meaning the individual letters as well as the spaces and punctuation. So you're probably pushing over 100. Now, remember, uh, optimal character count is anywhere between 50 and 65 characters. Anything over that, you might consider going to a, a two-column layout here. And I may ever consider doing that. I would say, let's go to two columns here and reduce the type size. Um, you've got this justified type. Now, if you're going to justify the type, I think you've done an okay job. But there are some problems with justified type. Look at how, how packed that is. These letters are turned so tightly together. And then over here, you've got other areas that are, like, look how widely, how widely spaced this is. And justifying type, it's, it's, it's just, it's difficult to work with because you, you get this, this kind of inconsistency in the density of uh, the letter spacing. And it's, it's just, it's a natural byproduct of, there are some adjustments you can make um, uh, to, to circumvent that. But nonetheless, you're going to get unusual spacing in justified type. So keep that in mind. Now, one thing I would recommend in justify type is do not center that last line. If you're going to justify type, make sure that last line is flush left. Also, in justify type, you probably want to try as hard as you can to stay away from uh, um, dashes. And also, technically, that comma right there, since this is justified, that's got to be hung. So you want to hang that punctuation for the comma after the nine. Um, in this particular uh, text selection, I would recommend using old style characters, uh, old style numerals, and uh, it's easy enough to find a, a typeface that has open type capabilities, so you can access the old style characters as well as all. Ca I'm sorry, small caps, 
Um, and I want to talk about small caps in one second. But well, as a matter of fact, let's talk about small caps right now. So this is technically known as a drop cap. And it's called a drop cap because theoretically what you would do is you would drop it into the paragraph. So uh, quite typically, a drop cap will take up three lines. Um, two is too small. Four might be a little too much. So three lines typically. So the I would be three lines. The problem with this I as a drop cap is it's, it's, it's really unusual to use a letter I. I mean, letters... Um, uh, like like P's or N's or M's or T's, anything that's just not super thin, like a small I, <laughs> uh, will work much better with a drop cap. There is an alternative. What I would recommend doing is taking in Northwest Pakistan. I would take that whole thing and set it in small caps and then increase the weight, maybe bold, but with small caps or even just small caps, see how that works. Uh, another alternative is if the typeface doesn't have small caps, you can cap that and reduce the, the, the type size, um, in the all caps. But see if you can find small caps. It would be, I think it would be beautiful, a really lovely way to set this into the paragraph. Um, as far as the timeline itself goes, I, you know, right now you're, you're trying to show this space between what's happening and, and you're trying to gauge that space based on the amount of time between each event. I don't think we need to do that. I mean, in a really super long timeline, it's one alternative, but we don't need to do that. There's only a, uh, a handful of selections here. So let's go ahead and evenly space those out. Don't re worry about um, where they sit in, in relation to the, the next, you know, the, the time frame between the next event. Just go ahead and space those out evenly. Let's get move that over to here. So we're starting over here. And then Malala font doesn't have a year there. So you want to be as consistent as possible. One of the problems I'm seeing with this timeline is you've got a lot of areas where these are so close together, you're forced to say to stack words on, on top of each other. And that just does not read well at all. Try to do anything you can to circumvent that. Try to get those uh, timeline entries to the point where they read as small paragraphs. And I think the type also is a little large here for right now that the type here is as large as the type in your body copy. So to um, to improve your, your uh, typograph hierarchy, consider your scale changes therein. Okay. All right. So those are my recommendations. Um, I'm thinking maybe of gridding this out. If you grid this out, maybe a three column grid, you could have one column, one column, then you start in with your gradient on the image. Okay. All right. So a great start. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I'll be glad to clarify. Thank you very much.